So I want to welcome you back to the continuation of our class on network and uh, internet uh, protocols. So um, we were talking about IP addressing and um, we saw that an IP address in the network layer of the OSI model, uh, the protocols that are run there is the IP version 4 and the IP version 6. And we said the IP version 4 is a 32-bit binary digit value. And um, we said that uh, it has four octets. This is one octet, two octet, three octets, and four octets. Now, we also said that um, uh, each of these octets has its binary uh, bits. It has eight binary bits, making it a total of 32. We also said that the subnet mask actually um, identifies the network portion of an IP address. The IP address has a network portion and has a host portion. And the subnet mask helps to identify the network portion. And for instance, this particular subnet mask here has this particular binary representation, all right? So how does it identify what is the network portion of this IP version 4? And we said it carries out the AND operation, the AND operation. And the AND operation says that where you have one and one, it will give you a one. Any other thing will give you a zero, all right? So if you do one and one, it will give you a one. If you have one, zero and one will give you zero. One and zero will give you zero, all right? That is the AND operation. So at the end of the day, it will identify the network portion of the IP address as this, okay? And we said the network portion is like the surname of that particular IP address. So every computer or every end device on that particular uh, LAN segment is going to have the same network portion of the IP address. Now, um, in this particular image, you can see that we have a network segmenting uh, 400 users, okay? in this lad one, all right? So 400 users that could each generate a broadcast traffic which can slow down a network. Now you see these 400 users, some of them are on this switch, some of them on this switch, some of them on this switch, and some of them on this switch. Now every switch is a broadcast device. Now what do we mean a broadcast device? We said that if a traffic goes into one port, it will be sent out through all the ports that are on that switch with the exception of the source port, okay? So if a traffic comes in here, you can imagine it will be sent out to all the ports, including this one. And the one that comes here will be sent to all the ports that are here as well. So it will create broadcast. So broadcast actually creates, um, slows down your network. So the solution to reduce the size of the network is to create smaller broadcast domain in the process called subnetting, all right? So the subnetting is like breaking this big broadcast domain into smaller broadcast uh, domains. All right, so these smaller broadcast domains are called subnets, okay? So subnetting reduces the overall, overall network traffic and improves the network performance, All right? So um, it's like you, instead of having one big broadcast domain, you can segment the network to have maybe uh, smaller uh, broadcast domains, right? So, 
network administrators can group devices and services uh, uh, in that they may be determined by a variety of factors. So let's look at this particular building. All right, this particular building. Let's say it's an office building that has how many floors? One, two, three, four, five floors. Now, in each of these floor, there is a network switch. You see, this is one, this is another one, this is another one, this is another one, and this is another one. So in each of these floors, there is a network switch. Now, we can group this building into different VLANs based on different factors, okay? We can group them based on the floors. We can say floor one, floor two, floor three, floor four, floor five. All right, so we can group them like that. We can decide to say based on departments, okay? Maybe we say we have administration department, human resource, students department, accounting department, okay? So you can, you can group them based on location. The location is like the floors. You can group them based on department, all right, to say, okay, you have admin department office some here, some in this floor, some in this floor, so you can group them like that. You can also group them by device type, okay? You can say, okay, host will be connected in one VLAN, uh, servers will be connected in a different VLAN, printers will be on a different VLAN, cameras will be on a different VLAN, uh, desktop phones will be connected in a different VLANs and things like that. So the whole idea of segmentation is to break in your large network into smaller uh, networks. Now, the IP version 4 has different classes, all right? We have class A, class A IP address. The classes of the IP address is determined from the values in its first octet, all right? The values that are in its first octet. Now, we are saying here that the IP addresses between zero to 127 in the first octet, zero up to 127, okay? In the first octet, they are designated to class A, all right? And they are to support extremely large networks with more than 60 million hosts. So when you have telecom companies like MTN, Glow, and things like that, this is the kind of organizations that use class A, all right? So you have large networks. So what is being determined, how do I determine a class A is the values in the first octet of the IP address. Once it spans between zero, between zero to one to seven is class A. And then class B. Class B is also determined from the first octet, okay? And it spans from one to eight, okay? One to eight to what? One, nine, one. You can see it here. So you see it's a continuation. You have zero to one to seven, then one to eight to one nine one. It's a class B and is designated to support moderate to large size networks with like 65,000 host addresses. And then you have class C. Class C continues from one nine one. All right. Uh, from one nine two to two two three. All right. So one nine two to 223, also in the first octet, all right? And it's usually designed to support small networks, all right? So we also have class D and class E, all right? Class D is usually used for multicast, and it also continues from 223. After 223 is what? 224, all right? So it takes in from 224 to 239, all right? So that is for multicast. And then class E is for experimental ad, uh, purposes. And it's actually, you see this is 239, is from what? 240 down to what? 255, all right? So that is how the blocks are broken. 
So the blocks are between what? Zero to what? To 255. To 255. That is the blocks. So you see anything from zero to 255 in the first octet, the minimum value is two zero. The highest value is what? 255. So zero to one to seven out of this range is class A. 128 to 191 from this range is class B. 192 to 223 from this range is class C. Uh, 224 to 239 is class D. And 240 to 255 is what? Class E. All right? So, like you see from the pie chart, class A has about 16 million uh, IP addresses that can be used. And then class B, class A takes like half of the entire pie. Class B actually takes a quarter of it and it has about 65,000 hosts. Then class C takes um, like uh, one sixth of it. Uh, that has about what? 254 hosts. And then class D and E uh, also take the other quarter. Okay. Now, within these particular blocks that we have talked about, all right, we have what we call private addresses and we have what we call public addresses. All right. Now, um, the private addresses are not unique and can be used by any internal network, which means that um, the private IP addresses are not routable over the internet, but the public IP addresses are routable over the internet. So if private addresses are not routable over the internet, you them for a block is what is public. What are the remaining? You see, remember we said from zero to 127. That is, that is class A. Okay. Now, out of this, we have picked the 10 block. Eh? The 10 block that is in the first octet. So every other thing is public. That is from zero to nine, zero to nine, and then 11 to 126. That is public. So this is the private one, the 10 block. Now for class B, we have 172.16.0.0 to 172.31.255.255. So that means, remember in class B, we said is 128 eh, to what? To 191 in the first octet. Okay? So in class B, the private one is just the what? 120, 172. And even in the 172, it is not the entire block of the 172 as you can see here. In the class A, it is the entire block of class A. 10.0.0.0 to 10.255.255. So it is the entire block that has been occupied. But in the class B, it is not the entire block. It is the 172 and it is the dot 16 sub block that has been occupied. Dot 16 up to dot 31. Can you see it? Dot 16 to dot 31. Those are the ones that have been occupied. But the remaining ones are for public. Now for class C, Remember, we said class C is from 192, 
192, sorry, 192 to what? To 223. 223. Okay? Now, so in the class C, we are picking the what? The 192 block. And the 192 is not the entire 192. It's the 192.168 block that is occupied. All right? So 192.168 to, uh, to 192.168.255 That is it. And the subnet mask that runs with them, you see in class A is the slash 8, and then class B is the slash 12 and class C is the slash 16, all right? So the addresses within these address blocks are not allowed on the internet and must be filtered by the internet route. So that means they are not routable over the internet. So if you have the internet, you have your local area network, you have computers that are using class A or class B or class C, Anytime the packet gets to this router, if it wants to go to the internet, it will be denied. All right? Because it is not routable over the internet. So definitely you need to do what? NAT. All right? You need to do NAT to be able to translate it from private IP addresses to what? Public IP address. That's why we say the network address translation is used to translate uh, between IP version 4, public and private IP addresses. Now, the default gateway, okay? Another role of the network layer is to direct packets between hosts. So a host can send a packet to itself. That one is called the local host and a remote host. So in this particular figure, you see that PC1, which is this guy here, is connecting to a local host on a simple network. This is the local host yeah, on a simple network. So this particular uh, network here, you see these people are connecting, this piece is connecting to this guy through this particular switch. So if they are exchanging traffic between themselves, they don't need this router. So it will just traffic comes here and comes here. But if they want to talk with this remote host, they want to talk with an uh, end device that is outside this particular domain that you see here, eh, they will need a default gateway. This is the gateway, the IP address of this router. Meaning that if the traffic here wants to get here, it needs to go through this router. So whether a packet is destined for a local host or a remote host, it is determined by the source end device. So the method of determining uh, varies by the IP version. So if you are going to the remote host, they will need to go through the default gateway. But if they are not going to the remote host, they don't need the default gateway. So the default gateway is a network device that can route traffic to other networks. So on a network, a default gateway is usually a router with the feature with these features. It has a local IP address in the same address range as other hosts in the local network. Like you can see here, this router one has two legs. You see, the one leg connects to this local host. The second leg connects to what? The remote host, that's to the public, okay? That is what we are saying. And then it can accept data into the local network and forward data out of the local network. And it has route, it routes traffic to other network. So a default gateway is required to send traffic outside of the local network. So traffic cannot be forwarded outside the local network if there is no default gateway, okay? So the IP version 4, in IP version 4, the host receives the IP version 4 address of the default gateway, either dynamically or manually. Dynamically, meaning that you are using a DHCP to 
which is a service to automatically assign IP addresses. Manually, that means you are the one that you are going to assign these IP addresses. In IP version 6, the router advertises the default gateway addresses or the host can be configured manually. So having a default gateway configured creates a default route in the routing table of the PC. So a default route is this route or pathway that your computer will take when it tries to connect to the remote network, right? So on Windows host, the, the route prints or net start minus R command can be used to display the host routing table. Both commands generate the same output, all right? So let me, let me show you what I mean. Let me share, share my Windows prompts. Okay. So if I do next start minus R, Okay. So you see what it has done is that it has populated the routing table of my machine. This is the routing table of my local machine. All right. So uh, it says if I am going to anywhere, I will follow this gateway. 102.131.234.1. That is the default gateway of my machine here. Okay. And this is the IP address of my machine. All right. So and. Um, Look at it. This, uh, this is my loop back. All right. So this is just my route. This is the uh, uh, multicast group that I have. So this is for my IP uh, v6. All right. It's my IP v6. So um, every local uh, every local what do we call it now? Every local machine has its own routing table, but the router itself also has its routing table. So if you just enter the router and you do show IP route, it's going to show you the routing table. So this is like what I showed you, uh, the route for IP version 4 and IP version 6 for a particular uh, PC. Now, IP version 6 is designed to be a successor for IP version 4. And whereas IP version 4 has 32 bits binary, IP version 6 has 128 bits binary. Okay? And it has space to provide for like 340 undecillion addresses. Oh my god. I don't know what this undecillion I don't know. I mean, we have million, we have billion, we have trillion, we have quadrillion, we have a, a pentrillion, we have exion. So on decillion, I really don't know. But one thing I know, it is it is very big and is not something you can exhaust anytime soon. So mobile providers um, have been leading the way in this uh, transition from IP version four to IP version six. So, uh, like the, <clears throat> like uh, the top ISPs, most top ISPs and content providers such as YouTube, Facebook, uh, and Netflix have also made the transition. They have they, they now run IP uh, version six. Okay, now many companies like Microsoft, Facebook. Uh, LinkedIn um, are transitioning to IP version 6 internally. All right? So the depletion of IP version 4 address space has been the motivating factor, meaning that why people are rapidly moving to IP version 6 is because the IP version 4 are finishing. And um, there is no good uh, date. So we are under Africa. So our own is what Afrinic. This is the organization. This is the agency that manage our 
uh, IP, IP addresses and they project the exhaustion of IP version 4 in 2020. All right. So, um, uh, some of the European countries have uh, RIPE, their own is RIPE. Uh, others is ARIN, others is LACNIC, others uh, APNIC, all right? So the world has one, two, three, four, five different um, parent bodies that issue out IP addresses, all right? So they are the one. So for Africa, it is AFRINIC. Now, why do we need the IP version 6? And the reason is because of what? Internet of Things. So the internet of today is more than email, web pages, and file transfer between computers. It is involving between internet of things. And the internet of things has to do with connecting computers, tablets, smartphones, uh, everything, your curtains, your cars, your smart watches, your television, your, in your farm, everything is going to be running on the IP. Uh, addresses and you need to get it internet ready all right and that's why we are moving that so you see the ip version 4 has four octets four octets each of those octet has eight binary uh digits okay now but ip version 6 has we don't call it octet it has segments eight segments one two three four, five, six, seven, eight. So you see IP version four has how many? Four octets. And the octets are represented in binary, um, in decimals, decimals. So when you have maybe 192, 192.168, you know, dot one, dot one. This is in decimal. And this is an octet, this is an octet, this is an octet, this is an octet. But you see in IP version six, it is not in decimal, it is in hexadecimal. When you say hexadecimal, that means hexa is what? 16. Decimal is what? 10. So hexadecimal is 16. So each of this segment has 16 binary digits. Can you see? So you pick one like this. It has 16 binary digits. So the eight, eight of the, uh, each of the eight segments has 16 binary digits. Or it has eight uh, uh, four hexadecimal digits. All right? It has 16 binary digits or four hexadecimal digits. So usually, IP version 6 is represented in four hexadecimal digits. And the, the smallest one is zero. And the highest one is what? F, 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 F. For IP version 4, the smallest one is zero. The highest value is what? 255. 255. Zero to 255. But for IP version 6, is zero to what? F. F, F, and F, all right? So that is how it is being represented. So uh, the preferred format for writing IP version 6 is this in 8. Each of the X is consisting of four hexadecimal what, values. So each X is a single hex text which is 16 bits for four hexadecimal digits. So you can see here, this is like a particular IP version six value. Can you see this one like this? Okay. So these values are in hexadecimal, represented in eight segments. All right. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And each of this is, uh, four hexadecimal digits or 16 binary digits, okay? 
Now, how do we represent them so that it will be easier for us? Because as you can see here, it's very long and very cumbersome. 2001, 0 db 8, 0 0 0 0, 1 1 1 1, 0 0 0 0, 0 0 0, and things like that. So how do we represent it in smaller values? So we have certain rules. Rule number one, it says omit the leading zeros. So what it means is that for any value that you have, uh, this is, for instance, an IP version 6. Any one value that has a zero in front, we are allowed to remove the zero in front. For instance, you see this 2001, then 0 dB8, we can omit this leading zero. Then 0000, we can omit all these three leading zeros, okay? Then one, 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 there's no zero. Then we can omit this ones. We can omit this ones. We can omit this ones and omit this. And then write it in this format. Yeah? 2001, then DB8, then zero, then one, 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 then zero, 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 then 200. So you see, this way, the rule number one says you can write an IP version six omitting what the leading zeros it is acceptable now let's see what rule two says because can you see this we have it in this format so let's see what rule two rule two says use the double column now the double column can replace any single now look at it here any single contiguous strings of one or more hex text zeros yeah look at it single or contiguous strings contiguous means that they follow each other they follow each other for for example look at this that we have we have a uh, narrow down so you see this zero is following this zero is following this zero so they are contiguous okay so the rule is saying that you can represent these contiguous zeros with what? A double column. That is what the rule is saying. So irrespective, no matter how many zeros you have, so far they are contiguous. They are following each other. So you see rule one, like we said, is remove the leading zeros. So we have removed the leading zeros. And then rule two says that contiguous zeros will be, will be represented with a double column. So you see all these ones, from here to here, we'll just represent it with a what? A double column. But because this guy is not contiguous, you see this one is not contiguous. There is a one here, all right? So it doesn't make it contiguous. So we're going to now put this zero the way it is. But because here is contiguous, they follow each other. It can be written this way. So you see the IP address, this very long IP address or this very long IP address, this one like this, can be written in this format. 2001, DB8, column 0, column 1111, double column 200. So once this double column is seen, it means that there is a contiguous zeros. So how many segments are here? 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So you see in between here, it has compressed two, uh, three segments. Okay, it has compressed three segments. Okay. Now, remember in the IP version four, we said we have, it has the network portion and the host portion. And it also has the prefix, which is the slash notation. Like we have a, a slash 24 here to tell us that this is a class C IP address slash 24 means that 24 bits are on are one or rather uh, uh, the network portion of this IP address is 24 bits long. All right. Uh, that's what it's trying to tell us. It identifies the network fish. So the prefix can identify by a dotted decimal subnet mask or a prefix length or slash notation. Okay. That's what we are seeing. So, Similar to IP version 4, the prefix length is represented in slash notation and is used to indicate 
the network portion of an IP version 6. All right, so if I have a prefix length of slice 64, that means it is telling me it has a network bit long of what? 64 bits, all right? So it is strongly recommend to use a 64 bit interface ID for most uh, networks. So I think that is all for our chapter six. Um, what did we learn? Ethernet and wireless LAN are uh, very popular technologies. We learned about the MAC address and is represented in using dashes and columns. We noticed that uh, we learned about IP version four and IP version six because they are the print, uh, uh, they are the protocols for network layer communications. And um, we learned of the network layer protocols platform, the four basic operations. Uh, we also learned an IP version for, okay, sorry, we learned the network layer protocols perform four basic operations such as addressing, end device, encapsulation, routing, and decapsulation. Those are the four basic operations of the network layer. Addressing and end device, addressing end device, sorry, addressing end device, encapsulation, routing, and decapsulation. Then IP version 4 addresses is a 32 bit hierarchical address that identifies a network and a host on a network. Okay. And IP version 6 is a 128 uh, hierarchical address. So the prefix land is the number of bits that uh, we have talked about. Okay. Thank you very much. I think this is how much we can take for today's class. Um, I'm going to also send you the recordings for those who might have joined in late. And um, I'll see you guys on Friday. On Friday, we are going to do a lab activity. Thank you very much.